In this video we are repairing a Lenovo All-in-1 700. This has been given to me by a friend because it was no longer working correctly. The Lenovo All-in-1 700 has a 24 inch display and it is dated around 2016. It still looks quite sleek and modern so I wanted to see if this could be salvaged. So stick around and I'll show you how we repair this computer. On the Lenovo's website for the all-in-one, I could find the next model up which is an Intel Core i7, whilst ours is an i5-6400. Subsequently, we have a discrete graphic card, the NVIDIA GeForce 930. So this computer has DDR4 RAM, all the rest is pretty much irrelevant, beside the full HD display and the speakers which sounds pretty good. So coming back to the issues I mentioned earlier, you may wonder what is wrong with it. The first issue I encountered straight away was a faulty touchscreen. Having done some research on this, it appears to be a pretty common defect with this computer. Many people describe it in different ways, but for me it was apparent that the touchscreen was randomly triggering towards the bottom of the screen, making the mouse really difficult to use. I eventually managed to complete the installation of Windows 10 and all seemed good, since I managed to disable the touchscreen device from Windows Device Manager. But then, all of a sudden, the computer displayed the blue screen, and the issue continued pretty much every time I would boot the PC up. So I decided to take it apart, and take it from there. I did not actually need to unscrew anything at first, as a convenient panel gave me access to RAM and hard drive. So I found this big chunky 2TB mechanical hard drive and I suspected the issue could be there. I decided to source a 250GB SATA free solid state drive from Amazon for just £27. Even if that didn't work I figured it would be useful to have as a spare cheap SSD. I would always recommend going for a solid state drive not only because it's much faster than a mechanical drive but also, as it turned out, the mechanical drives tend to get damaged more easily, specifically when power loss occurs during a write disk operation. So I finally managed to install my favorite operating system today, to Ubuntu 2004, and all that was fine, but I was still having issues with the touchscreen. Since I could not disable it from the BIOS, I was wondering if I could disconnect the cable. So the real disassembly began. The computer was fairly clean inside, but I gave it a clean anyway with the Hoover. I was having to dismantle more and more parts, as I could not see any obvious touchscreen cable. Until I eventually found it, it actually had printed touch on the motherboard, which was very handy to identify. Right, so we just need to put everything back together and hope I haven't damaged anything. From my first boot, it was confirmed. The computer still works and I was able to load Ubuntu successfully. I pulled this out so I think I deserve a cheeky like and subscribe. Now everything was back together, I decided to run some benchmarking. Unigine Heaven scored 656 with an average FPS of just 26. It was a bit disappointed by the graphic card considering my HP X360 scored almost double with the integrated Radeon Vega 10. So what about upgrades? 
As I mentioned earlier, the Intel i5 can be replaced with the i7-6700. The i7 runs at 3.4 GHz and has double the amount of threads, but having a look on eBay, it seemed a bit too expensive for me. But I will keep an eye on those CPUs to see if the price eventually drops. One simpler upgrade would be the RAM. I noticed one RAM slot was available, so maybe we could add 4GB or even 8GB, so make this a proper coding machine. For now I decided to give it a go as it is. And to be honest, 8GB seemed to be just fine for now. IntelliJ was running ok, but I haven't tried to load any large projects yet, to be fair. In terms of CPU performance, the i5 recorded a Geekbench 5 score of 873 for a single core and 2745 for multi-core multi -core operations, which is actually not too bad, because it's just a little bit behind my Ryzen 7 despite the Ryzen running at a much lower temperature. So all this is absolutely fine for running IntelliJ or VS Code for a day-to-day -day programming, and even Docker seemed to install and run fine, but I know Docker will require the extra RAM pretty soon. So to conclude this video, I'm glad to say this computer has been brought back to life with the new SSD drive and the touchscreen fix. I will give it a shot to see if I can actually work on this computer as it is, or if I need to spend more money in upgrades. So that's all for now, if you have any questions please leave a comment, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.